All right, welcome, fond friends. To Do this. Did you want your face in it? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. <laughs> to this demonstration of bone grafting and membrane placement for rich preservation for eventual implant and or bridge. Yeah, good. Close the door there. All right, so we've got. It doesn't take that many that many tools um, once you've gotten the tooth out. So in this case, you can zoom in here. Basically got our, our missing tooth here, number 19, that's Audi Sprouty. We took it out nice and clean. We didn't have to do any kind of flap procedure, but I'll show you what kind of flap procedure I would use anyway when it's time for that. Um, if you're planning on doing bone grafting and membrane, there's a couple things you want to have, make sure happen at the beginning of the appointment. Number one, put the membrane in. And this membrane is a super nice flexible one called Contour Matrix. So membrane in the saline? Yep, so okay. you put the membrane in the saline, it hydrates it, makes it nice and flexible and floppy. Um, there's a couple different membranes that we've tried out, but obviously it's, it's just like paper at this point. Um, and then it gets super flexible. The other thing we do is we get our uh, Cytogenix Raptose syringe. Um, this would have minocycline in it, by the way. You would warm it up for 20 to 30 seconds to get it warm, and this should be sterile saline. Um, and then you pour some minocycline in there as a, so that infuses both the membrane and the bone graft uh, material. So all this stuff gets done at the beginning, assuming you are for sure doing a bone graft. If you're like, I don't know if we're gonna do bone graft or not, don't do this because once you've opened stuff up, it's you can't you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Okay, so you take off this tip and it's got a little little grate across the across the top. And so you pull in some of the minocycline water. And sometimes it takes a little bit of a little bit of squeegee action there to get that to get that set in there. And then a little tap 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 so you look like you're in Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. And then now, so how do you know it's ready? So that bone now is sitting in there and I pull up kind of to the top and now it's, there's liquid all in there and the bone kind of pulled back off. And so that's now hydrating with the minocycline water as well. So set that aside, let that, let that marinate. All right, so um, we've taken out our, we've taken out our tooth atraumatically. If we're planning on taking out the tooth and bone grafting, you can go ahead and do the flap. It's no, there's no big deal to, to plan to go ahead and do the flap. Um, so if the tooth was already here, I would take my flap and I would, um, yep, I'd just come across here, straight to the tooth in front, like that. And then I would just break right through this papilla right here. Dink, okay. And then I'd do a circular incision to the tooth <coughs> behind. Okay, and then if this tooth was here, I would do circular incisions around like that. Okay, and then same thing on the linguals of these guys, circular incisions around and across. Now, um, the reason that we don't just, you know, the membrane is gonna be placed right here. Okay, you're gonna tuck it in here, it's gonna go across, and then we're gonna tuck it in underneath here. Because that little tucked out area, you've got, we gotta have enough flexion to get the membrane in there then we're gonna we're gonna do a full thickness flap and basically we're gonna be lifting the soft tissue off this is the buccal side which is easier to access than the lingual side okay and a little periosteal action here okay and you basically want to reflect down well probably seven or eight millimeters, maybe up to 10 millimeters, because we want that membrane to go from here and then come across. All right, so we've got that set out. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the lingual, full thickness flap, bring it all across. This is faster, obviously, than an actual patient's, patient's mouth. Okay, and that little, that little papilla inter, papillary uh, gingiva comes out there, okay? You got your full thickness flap, then you take out the tooth, boom. Um, ideally, you section all the way down to the, to the um, interradicular bone and go past it, and then you take them out one at a time. Easy peasy. All right, so now we're going to um, set, we're gonna 
scraped the area out really well with the with the molt. We want good bleeding. If there's no bleeding in there, it's not going to heal very well. So you got to get live blood cells that are going to go in there and populate the bone that we're going to be putting in there. Um, so if it's not uh, if it's not bleeding already, you'll scrape it. If it's still not bleeding, then I'll take the hand piece in there and kind of buzz around and, and puncture a couple little areas. Um, judiciously, don't go crazy, but puncture a couple areas, get some bleeding in there. You want it to basically be slowly filling up with heme, um, so that you have so you have active active blood cells in that area. Okay, then we're all ready to go. We're ready to do the bone graft. So we get out our little dude here, which normally I'd have some some uh, forceps, and then we lay it over the top and see how nice and flexible that is. Super super flexible. And in this case, I'm going to pretend that there's a tooth right here. And so we're going to say, well, it's too, it's too wide to go through there. So we're just going to cut across about the thickness of the area. Now, some people go fancy and they'll do an hourglass shape. And that does create more grip across those areas. I don't know if that's necessary. Um, so it's up to you. If you want to be fancy, you could do that. Um, but otherwise, you want to just cut it straight of the thickness. If you have gloves on, it should be fine. You can touch it. It's not, you don't have to be crazy about whether you touch it with your gloves. You just want to make sure it's a clean surface. And I'll dip it back in the water, make sure it's nice and cleaned off. Okay. And then I'll set it back on there and see, okay, is it about where we want it to be? If it if it's a little bit a little bit over, that's okay. And then next to the tooth, if it's kind of bunching up, you still want to go back and you want to trim it a little bit more. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to trim it a little bit more. So it's basically just the width of the socket of the tooth. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's a necessity of really doing, like I said, that hourglass shape. But okay. there may be some literature, <coughs> literature out there that says to do otherwise. Um, okay, so now I'm going to set it in place here. And I'm kind of sitting as to where if I was um, where the patient was at. Okay. And basically, I'm going to use this periosteal and the cotton forceps, and I'm going to kind of, kind of push it down in there. Make sure it's it. It kind of rolled a little bit when I was doing that, and then uh, just make sure it's set all the way down in there. Pretty simple. Okay, this is way more simple than it is in the mouth because there's a tongue whipping around and the, the tissue here doesn't pull away quite as easily as this rubberized stuff does. And then you kind of get an idea of, okay, when it comes across, I'm gonna get, you know, I want two, you know, two, three, four millimeters um, coverage onto that area. And I always tuck it in on the lingual side or the palatal side because it's easier to tuck the final flap in once you've and once you've done it rather this is the harder side to tuck in you want the easier side to tuck in when you're finishing because that's the harder the harder part of it okay so now we're ready this has been hydrating for 10 minutes or so we squeeze off the rest of the water and then we take Fancy. off the little cap and then basically we're just going to kind of plunge in and it'll it'll kind of jump on you so be very measured okay i'm going to shimmy 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 again you want bleeding down on the bottom this should be it should be infusing with heme. What's your height goal? Do you like to cover a little over? Yep, a little over. You just want to mound it up just a little bit, a little, a little prairie dog mound up there. Okay, and I'll kind of pack it down in, kind of medium pressure. Okay, because you want it, to, you want the bone to go all the way down into the base of those sockets. And then we'll add a little bit more, just so it domes up, just a, just a gentle little dome on top. And now we're tapping it down. When the heme fills up, fills up, fills up, I'll put this right on top and I'll have the assistant with the little white suction touch right on top here and it'll just it'll wick out everything over the top and then you can see what you're doing again, okay? Then you basically got that guy set in place and now with cotton forceps it's a little easier but now you'll, you'll get this guy and start to tuck him in underneath and uh, you may have to have, to have the assistant uh, retract for you the lip and whatnot, and then you're basically, yeah, retracting and tucking and retracting and tucking. And uh, sometimes the cotton forceps are a little easier. Sometimes the molt is easier. Sometimes the periosteal is easier. And basically we're just tucking it, tucking it in underneath there. Okay, so you've got it tucked in. 
this is way easier than it is in the mouth. It kind of fights you a bit more in the mouth. But these materials are pretty are pretty solid for that. Okay. Sometimes it wants to just kind of spring out of there and that nothing really wants to stay in place. That's okay. You just need to get it kind of just a basic, a basic settle down spot so that it's not you know whipping around or falling over falling over the place and, and you got kind of that pooched up uh, bone grafting underneath there that's kind of pooched up just a little bit and that's about where you want it. So then we'll go to, and even if it's kind of dancing around and the membrane isn't staying in there, that's okay. You can fix that with the rest of this. So start on the outside just because it's easier to start on the outside and finish on the inside. And I'll do two figure eights that are overlapping. So there'll be one, two, three, four bites across evenly spaced. And the figure eight will start at this bite, skip one, and then go to this bite uh, and coming back. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to come across here. Try not to grab the membrane if you can. This one's the tricky one that where you're coming from the the outside going to the inside. What kind of suture are you using? This for is this? 5 um, 5.0 nylon. It's a monofilament, non-resorbable, a um, little bigger, a little stronger than the 6.0. Okay. Then I come back across here, coming on the inside, and this time I'm going from the inside out. When would a patient come back for you to remove sutures? Uh, two to three weeks. Uh, 10 days at the shortest. Um, we'll tie this fairly snug, kind of medium snug. And then, so again, I'm counting one, two, three. So one, two, three, four evenly spaced areas. So this will, we'll skip that next one and come into this one. And then we'll have two figure eights that basically overlap each other. So that guy sits across here. One, two, three, four. And this is where before you tighten it down, so this thing again, maybe kind of flopping all over the place, just kind of keep track of where everything is at. Now at this point, now you can start to tighten things down. It'll kind of hold in place more. You tuck the membrane back down in, tuck it in, and now it starts to stay. Okay. <coughs> then we do, I always do a triple throw to do the first grab because the triple throw holds the tension better than a double throw does. So you can tie the second the second throw so do you do it go. triple and then back single and then yep. triple again at the end or? no i'll do a double at the end so triple to kind of hold it and i just kind of i keep snugging and cinching and cinching now you don't want to pull these guys together with primary intention you want to leave it basically where you where you got it so that all this keratinized tissue stays here keratinized tissue stays here so that when you place an implant it's easier to keep clean if you tie this and these guys go whoop and you pull them all the way together well that's nice to keep all the stuff intact but you just made it harder for yourself harder for the patient for the next several years to keep that implant clean so Tie that off, and then a double to finish it off. Dink. And about three to four millimeters of tail on that should be plenty. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and do the same thing. I can either start at this in-between spot, or I can come to the front, which is what I'm gonna do in this case from the front. If you grab a little bit of the, of the membrane coming through, that's not a big deal. As long as it doesn't pull the membrane up or uh, coronally. And then we're going to slide that back in to this corner over here. When in doubt, bite a little bit more. Um, ideally about three millimeters, three to four millimeters of grab is good. This one is a little too shallow. I, I should have had a larger bite of tissue because a short bite will pull through and then they get super loose. Okay, so about three to four millimeters out. Even if you're going down into mucosa, that's okay. Where are you at, bro? Yeah, I'm kind of slipping underneath that little guy there. Okay, and final snug down again. Reverse throw back. Bring it down. Final double throw forward. 
Thank you, you always try not. to finish your knot on the buckle? Yeah, try to finish it on the buckle. It's easier to, easier to get access to. Okay, so we had a figure eight, the figure eight, and then the other figure eight overlaps over the top of that. And just medium, medium tension there. These will loosen up over time. Um, but there you go, our basic, basic finish. Um, these come out uh, anywhere from 10 days to three weeks, just kind of depending on the schedule. Usually I target about two weeks to take it out. Um, two weeks to take it out. Um, when it comes back, these will be super loose. And when they're, uh, they're super loose and the collagen membrane will be half dissolved, you get bone particles coming out. That's all, that's all normal. Um, but the, the base, the, the majority of what's underneath um, will, will be, remain intact, especially if you had good bleeding that kind of creates that initial blood clot, okay? So pretty straightforward. Um, Sweet. Good luck. Okay.